In a previous video, we discussed how to map a property using free tools such as Google Earth and Traclea. And while that's great and helps us identify features that might be problematic when it comes to management, it doesn't actually help us manage the forest. To do that, we have to map out more than just the features of the terrain. We have to map out the forest itself. You see, forests are amazingly large and complex, and different areas are going to have to be treated differently. So what we need to do is break the forest down into smaller components called stands. A stand is simply an area of trees that shares similar physical attributes, usually species, size, and density. To break a forest down into stands, we simply analyze aerial imagery, and then pick out those areas based on the physical attributes we can observe from the image. Now this can be as simple or complex a task as you need it to be. You can make your stands incredibly simple, just softwood and hardwood, or you can have a complex stand typing system as is typical around here. For example, I happen to have this old stand typing map for my property that I got when I closed, and uh, part of the area is listed as an M3D, and that just stands for mixed wood, size three out of four, so pole size, and then D, and the D is a density, so it goes from A to D. A is incredibly dense, and D is low density. So it's a low density pole size mixed wood stand which, you know, that's fairly accurate, but it's fairly broad as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to update the stand types on my property. I'm going to go through the process with you so you can see what I'm looking for, how I'm delineating it, and some useful tools you can use if you want to do this on your property. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so here we are at the property that I mapped out and delineated last time, and now we're going to be delineating the stands. Uh, now, before we get to that task in particular, let's look at exactly what we're going to be looking for and what we're going to be doing. So again, a forest stand is kind of the base unit of forest management, and it's going to be some combination of species, size, and density. So what we're going to be doing is looking at aerial imagery, both present and historical, and seeing if we can kind of map out groups of trees that share these characteristics. So, uh, in many cases, the most obvious differentiation is going to be softwood or hardwood, which is to say broadleaf or conifer. As you can see in aerial imagery, this has a pretty clear differentiation. And so, if we wanted to have a very broad type of uh, stand delineation, then that can be pretty easy. We can put a line right through here, and to the east is our softwood stand, and to the right is our hardwood or mixed wood stand. Now you can get a little more in depth from here, and then you could say that this centerpiece right here is more pure hardwood, while this area to the side is more mixed wood. And so you could delineate out from here a pure hardwood stand, and then call this mixed wood, this softwood, etc. Now let's look at the softwood in particular. If we look here at the softwood, we can see that there are different textures and colors within this uh, evergreen forest. So in particular right here in the center, it looks a little more pale if you can tell, it's a little more open, and what that is, is it's going to be your cedar and more black spruce mix of spruce, um, and so this is probably a little wetter, a little flatter, maybe a little basin in the terrain, and so this is going to grow a different type of species. So we can call this another stand as well. And right here, while it all kind of looks the same, if you look closely you can see some differences in the shape of crowns. These crowns tend to be a little smaller and closer together. These ones are broader and larger. And then here you seem to have some extra plumage. There are some crowns that if we zoom in are a little more star shaped. Now what this is, is this is an overstory of white pine. Now this is probably hybridized black spruce and red spruce. So basically just taller and skinnier spruce. And then here we have some more fuller crowned red spruce with a smaller component of, of white pine. Now, right now, I'm kind of talking about species-specific stuff, but you don't actually need to know the species in order to do this exercise. If you have any doubts as to what is actually in the stand, you can just go and check it later. All I'm trying to show you right now is some of the differences in textures and colors and size and exactly what we're looking for to determine what establishes a stand differentiation. Now, because we're just looking at aerial imagery, it's important to look at a variety of different images. So what's great about Google Earth is it has this button up here that you can actually go through and look at historical imagery. You know, different snapshots of the area throughout the years. And different photos at different times of the year are going to offer different benefits in terms of stand typing. So, for example, with Leaf Off, which is one of my favorites, you can actually zoom into the stand and see the shadow of the individual stems. 
And this can give you a really great idea of what the density of the stand is. So for example, right here, we can see a lot more of these shadows and they're a little skinnier compared to over here. Here you can tell the trees are larger and further apart. So the size is gonna be larger and the density is gonna be lower compared to over here. So we can probably put a stand line in between these, these two areas. Moreover, if we go to the leaf on season, we can see that clearly these crowns on the right are taller and thus are casting a shadow over this area. And again, we can see a difference in texture too. This extremely smooth texture in the crowns probably points to sugar maple and beech, where over here there's more yellow birch and so forth. As one final example, I wanted to show you this area that I hunted last fall and kind of used aerial imagery to pre-scout. Um, so this is an early leaf photo, and so we can see a difference in the progression of leaf development. Now, first of all, sometimes, you know, there can be terrain factors that affect this, so it doesn't necessarily mean there's a stand, uh, but it definitely helps. And, you know, there are some areas where we see some pretty full development, and uh, then some areas where it's more mid-development, that's kind of the average. But then there are some areas that are still entirely bare. And there's not enough of a difference in topography to make that the make or break. So we clearly have some differences in species. And then we can go back in time to an earlier photo, and we have a great example of a mid-autumn uh, leaf foliage photo. And you can see similar patterns in the uh, progression of the loss of chlorophyll. So we have some areas right here where it's still summer green, and then some areas where you know it's past peak already, and some areas where it's kind of pre-peak. So again, this can be affected by sight and aspect and a lot of other things, but it's a pretty good indication that they're different species. And um, in particular, you know, oak tends to be the last to lose its color in the fall, and uh, it can keep its leaves well into December. So this, I had guessed, was an oak stand, and I was correct in that assessment. So now that you kind of see what we're looking for, let's get to the practical application. Now, be before we begin, it's important to kind of set the parameters of what you're looking for. If you really wanted to, you could make a stand out of three trees, but that would be impractical. So it's good to set a minimum size for a stand. In my case, because I have a small property, I'm going to be looking at a one acre minimum. But if you have a larger property, you might want to look at five or even ten acres for a stand size. Remember, these are the base units of management. A stand is an abstraction of species, size, and density. So this is going to give us information about how the stand is going to be managed. So think about the logistics of managing your property in regards to what you want the minimum size to be. If you're never going to come in for a one acre harvest, then maybe you want to go a little, a little larger. It's all about the resolution of your operations and what data you actually need. All right, so this is the same property that we delineated in the last video. And uh, let's take a look at the stands here. So down south, we clearly have a mixed wood site. There's a lot of evergreens, and you can see some gray from the hardwoods in here. Um, and if you look to the north here, we can clearly see a difference in the size of the crowns and the height. These trees are lower density, and they're also larger. So our first stand is likely going to be down here. Now, if we look at this area right here, we see an area where it's so dense with trees, you can see the, the shadows of little trees, but it's so close together, it almost looks gray. So you have this dark area where there's a substantial difference in the color. And like the last stand, you can kind of see a northern boundary to this. Over here, while you can still see some area with hardwoods, it's clearly less dense. You can differentiate individual stems and doesn't kind of, it doesn't create that gray mass. Likewise, you can pick out the individual softwoods and see their individual shadow. So this is higher density and this is lower density, even though it looks like the heights are about the same. Now, this stand over here is a good example of what I mean when I say that you kind of have to choose your parameters and a minimum size for a stand. If I really look, I can pick out multiple different areas that look similar. This area right here looks similar, this all looks similar, but those are probably, you know, at most a third of an acre each. So I kind of have to zoom out a little bit and look at the macro scale. This all looks like a fairly uniform stand until we get about here. And up here, we can see that, honestly, a lot of the attributes are pretty similar in terms of size and species, 
but there's demonstrably less softwood, so it makes sense to make this a separate stand. Now let's get to delineating. So much like last time, we're going to be using the Add Polygon tool. Now, the problem with Google Earth here is it's a very imperfect program, and the delineation for multiple adjacent polygons is a bit messy. There's no Snap 2 tool, so you can't get the lines exactly uniform. And that's all right. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look great. There can be some slivers and overlap. Uh, let's just try to make it look as good as possible. So I'm going to start down here in the corner. And I'm going to go up to this boundary I identified earlier, where the trees kind of transition from larger trees to smaller, more dense trees. I'm also going to change the uh, style here so it doesn't fill in. There we go. And I'm going to come down here. And again, you can use whatever resolution you want for when you're delineating. I'm going to use what I'll call a fairly high resolution here. And I think I'm going to cut it off right there. All right. Now I just match up with that. And we got our first stand. OK, now let's get to naming the stand. Now, I mentioned earlier the stand typing conventions that are at least used up here. Uh, you by no means have to use that. Use what works for you. This can be as simple as softwood stand, hardwood stand. You can call it a pine stand, oak stand. Um, you can name them after dead presidents. You can do whatever you want. But I'm going to use the stand typing conventions that I'm used to, which I think it's called the Sewell stand typing convention. So this stand here, now if you don't know the species, then uh, I think the best thing to do is delineate the stands first, go out in the field, take notes, come back, and then uh, determine a name for them. But I've been out in the field. I know exactly what's here, so uh, that part has already been done. So this stand here, we have some mature fir and some pole-sized poplar, uh, and it's fairly dense. So I'm going to call this an S, whoops, SF for spruce fir, and then PO for poplar. And we're going to call it a 3B. The 3 meaning it is merchantable, but not overly large. So we're going to call that good. Now in the description, again, you know, you can do whatever you want, add notes inventory data, anything about the stand, treatment history you can add in here. Um, but I'm just going to leave it blank for now. Now this is where it gets a bit more complicated because we have to match up the lines as good as possible. And like I said, they're going to be slivers. So don't worry about it too much. It doesn't have to be pretty. So now I have to find the northerly boundary of this stand. And I actually think this stream works as a sensible boundary. OK. Now, this is a lot of unmerchantable stems that are very, very tightly packed. So down here, I gave this a B density, which is the second highest. I'm going to give this the highest density of A. But I'm also going to move it one down in the size column to a 2. Instead of this is a 3, this is a 2. So now we get to the species. And the predominant uh, species here is going to be poplar. So when we name it, I'm going to call it PO. And then as a secondary species, I'm going to call it TH. 2, which is our size, sapling size. And then we're going to give it an A for highest density. And for a tertiary species, so a species that occurs less frequently, I'm going to put an SF on the end here. And we're going to call that good. Next stand, the behemoth right here. And now, the thing about this stand is there's actually some fairly large stems in here. Uh, but they're pretty low density. So I'm actually going to call this a it's actually hard to determine whether it's predominantly softwood or mixed wood. I'm going to call it predominantly softwood. SF so, uh, for spruce fir, TH for tolerant hardwood, that's your maple and beech. And I'm going to call it a 3D. So that's three sizes large, but the D is low density, so it's very low density. 
And I am going to put PO as a tertiary species. We're going to call that good. And then finally, we have this stand up here. And this one I'm going to call TH. I'm going to call this one a C because uh, some of the hardwood is actually, uh, because some of the larger hardwood is actually a little more dense here. And then as tertiary species, secondary species, we're not going to put anything, and then put SF as just a tertiary species. OK, and that's good. So we have all our stands delineated, and now I'm just going to make it a little more visible here. Whoops. I'm going to go in. I'm going to fill them and just kind of create some color. This kind of looks like an Easter map. All right. And there we have our stands. So remember, and I, I can't stress this enough, this is the basis of a management plan, really. This is the level at which I am going to be determining um, my treatments and how I plan to manage this forest into the future. And I'm going to be managing these stands separately. Now, sometimes, you know, stands can be different, but you can still manage them together. They can have a similar harvest schedule. Um, you know, and there's, there are some economic and logistic considerations there, but in general, they're managed, they're managed as separate units. Now, with these polygons in place, you can use this to store data about the stands. So you can cruise and take inventory data and store it in these KML files. You can document harvest history. You can document harvest schedules, any other treatment. Uh, it's really a way to organize data on a geographical basis. So it's an important exercise if you're interested in managing a woodland. And uh, while a lot of this is outsourced to a forester, I'm a big believer that landowners, loggers, and foresters should all learn each other's skills and capabilities. They're essentially an interchangeable um, unit for a successful forest management paradigm. So it's a good exercise for landowners to be familiar with their own stands. Maybe this is of interest to some of you, maybe it isn't. But uh, part of the reason I wanted to document this is because I'm going to be going through and discussing the management of these stands individually, and I wanted some context for that. So next we'll be going through and I'll be talking about the conditions and uh, my plan for all these stands. So if that interests you, stay tuned for that. But if you like this video or you're interested in seeing more, uh, please like and subscribe and uh, there'll be more coming to you. So uh, that's all for now, guys. See you later.